Hydrobromination of alkenes with peroxide, the addition of HBr and ROOR, if you will. That's going to be the topic of this lesson, and uh, again, this is a lesson we covered back earlier in the day when we talked about alkene reactions, but we did not cover the mechanism, and it's specifically that mechanism that we're going to allude to here. Now, I just want to go back and review a little bit. So when you add HBr and peroxide, it adds an H and a Br anti-Markovnikov. So the bromine ends up on the less substitute side, the H on the more substitute side, and that's different than just the plain old addition of HBr, which is hydrobromination, and it adds H and Br Markovnikov. H on the less substitute side, bromine on the more substitute side. And I just want to allude back to the mechanism here that involved a carbocation. So the first thing the alkene attacked was the hydrogen. And I want to point out that the first thing that reacts with the alkene ends up on the less substituted side. That H ends up on the less substituted carbon. So and that gets us the more substituted, more stable carbocation intermediate. So and technically we wouldn't normally draw it in, but there is an H right there. Also formed a bromide ion. So, and it is that bromide ion that then comes in attack second to form our final product. So, big important thing here though, that the first thing that reacts with the alkene ends up on the less substitute side. Well, the same thing's gonna happen here. And instead of being all about getting a more stable and more substituted carbocation, here it's gonna be about getting a more stable and more substituted carbon radical. So, but carbocations and carbon radicals follow the same trend, more substitute, more stable. And so the big thing here is that the first thing that reacts with the alkene was the H and it ends up on the less substitute side. Well, the first thing that's gonna react with our alkene with HBr and peroxide is gonna be a bromine radical and it's gonna end up on that less substitute side. So let's take a look. And I'm actually not gonna start at the beginning here. I'm not gonna start at initiation. I'm actually gonna start in the propagation steps. I just wanna follow the actual formation of our product here. So we're gonna have our alkene actually react with the bromine radical and we're gonna form a new bond on that less substitute side and half that bond comes from the electron on the bromine radical. The other half comes from one of the electrons in the pi bond. The other one goes back onto the more substituted of the two carbons of the alkene. And so the first thing that's reacted with our alkene was the bromine now, and it ends up on the less substituted side so that we get this more substituted, more stable intermediate. And instead of a carbocation intermediate though, it is a radical intermediate. Cool, and then that radical intermediate, it's gonna come react with a molecule of HBr, one of our major reagents here, and it's gonna form a bond to the hydrogen. Cool, and I'm technically not gonna draw that hydrogen in. We've now formed a new bond to a hydrogen from that carbon, so it's no longer a radical, but we are gonna form another bromine radical right there. Cool, and what's that bromine radical gonna do? Well, that bromine radical is gonna find another one of our alkene to react with and just keep repeating these two steps over and over and over, producing product all along the way. These are your propagation steps. And again, most of the time you can recognize a propagation step because you start with one radical, you end up with one radical. You start with one radical, you end up with one radical, and there's no net decrease in the concentration of radicals. So, but properly, how you should really recognize a propagation step is that it is a sequence of two steps that repeat over and over and over again to produce your desired product. So, and the second one should produce what you need to redo the first step. That way they can again repeat over and over and over again. So, and the reason I'm specifying this is because we're gonna have something a little bit funky on the initiation here. So in this reaction, this one only, there's two initiation steps, not just one. And usually we think of initiation as being, you start with no radicals, you end up with two radicals. And that'll be true for the first initiation step, it won't be true for the second. So let's take a look at those initiation steps. So the first initiation step, that's what you need the peroxide for. Well, let's get this right. So your peroxide, that oxygen-oxygen single bond is a very weak bond. So, and it's going to break spontaneously here. So, and form two alkoxide radicals. Cool, so we went from no radicals to two radicals, easy to identify as initiation. So however, that doesn't produce what we need for this propagation step. We need a bromine radical. We don't have a bromine radical. So where does that bromine radical come from? Well, one of these alkoxide radicals. is gonna come and react with HBr. And it's gonna abstract the hydrogen.
forming a little bit of alcohol, but more importantly, forming our bromine radical. So the sequence of steps that forms the radical that you need to do your propagation steps are your initiation steps. And this again is a little bit tricky. Because that first one again follows the pattern we've seen for initiation steps where you don't start with any radicals and you end up with two radicals, increase in the net concentration of radicals. But notice the second one, you start with one radical, you end up with one radical. And if you didn't really know this technically very well, you might think that was a propagation step. So, but the idea is that these are your propagation steps, the sequence of two steps that repeat over and over and over again. So to create your desired product, we're not creating our desired product here at all for one. And also notice these are the ones that repeat over and over and over again. And the second step produces the radical that you need to go back and redo the first step over and over and over again. Well, notice these two steps combined are how we get the first of our bromine radicals, the one that we need to get this whole thing going. And another way to kind of recognize those as your initiation steps. All right. So, and then we've got a, a series of possible uh, termination steps. And if you look at all the different radicals we've got present, so technically the alkoxide radicals could get involved, but just like with NBS, they're going to be present at fairly low concentration compared to the other radicals. And we can kind of ignore them. I'm not saying that their termination uh, steps with those are not possible. They're just much less likely. And we usually just kind of omit them. So, but in this case, we've got bromine radicals. And so those bromine radicals could bump into each other. forming BR2. We could have two of our carbon radicals bumping into each other. forming this lovely product, form a new carbon-carbon bond. Or finally, you could have one of your carbon radicals bumping into a bromine radical, forming a bond to a second bromine in this case. And so none of these termination steps actually form any more of our desired product. These are all going to give super tiny amounts of some side products that we don't usually even consider. Cool. So there's our mechanism for the addition of HBr with peroxide. And this would have been a little bit much to add into the alkene chapter. And so most texts, uh, while they may or may not even include the reaction in the alkene chapter, reserve the mechanism till we actually deal with other radical reactions. That's why it's kind of showing up here, even though you've technically seen the reaction earlier in the course. If you have found this lesson helpful, would you consider giving me a like and a share? A couple of the best things you can do to help support the channel. If you're looking for study guides or practice problems or practice final exams or final exam rapid reviews, check out my premium course on chadsprep.com.